We're going to start off your news hour talking about how South Carolina lawmakers are getting involved to change how charter and private schools are competing athletically against public schools. This year alone, only three championships out of 16 were won by public school teams in the 1A and 2A winter and fall sports divisions. Now the other 13 championship wins went to charter and private schools. News 19's Becky Buds has details now on how lawmakers are proposing to change this. The chemistry on the team is is unmatchable. So we're we're, we're, we're brothers. John Sowell is a football player at Gray Collegiate in West Columbia, a school that's becoming increasingly dominant in sports. Like at Gray, everybody has a goal that we want to achieve in that estate. And but under a proposed law, charter schools like his wouldn't be eligible for postseason play unless the playoff and championship competitions only include charter schools. That's because some charter schools can target mostly athletes and some worry that gives them a major competitive advantage over public schools, particularly since they often compete against smaller high schools in the state that may not have the same resources. Supporters say this legislation would level the playing field between private and public charter charter schools and public schools. So if you're comparing populations and your population is almost all athletes, and then I have a population that is made up of just a fraction of athletes, um, then we're still comparing apples and oranges. Fairfield County Superintendent J.R. Green gave his district's high school teams permission to forfeit games against Gray after several big losses. It was quite demoralizing to my young people. Separate legislation calls for charter and private school sports teams to be put in a higher athletics classification if they accept students living outside the public high school attendance zone in which they're located. South Carolina High School League Commissioner Dr. Jerome Singleton says until a temporary law renewed in the state budget every year is changed, the league is powerless. I've always thought that the, the, the member schools ought to be able to make the decision on rules that affect their member schools. Charter athletes like Sowell say the changes would be unfair. For the legislators to take that away from us would basically, in essence, mean that they're throwing all of our hard work and dedication down the drain because that is our overall goal um, is to win state. It's too late in the session for any of these bills to be passed, but could come up again next year. Reporting at the State House, Becky Buds, News 19 WLTX. The league will start making plans soon for its next realignment, which will go into effect for the 2024 through 2026 school years. This week, North Carolina passed similar legislation.